What's going on? Vintage cube time. Doing a little late night vintage cube. You guys wouldn't know that because the YouTube videos come up at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time every day. Doesn't matter what time I do the draft. Vampiric Tutor. Lelia's good. Library is kind of meh. I do like Archon a lot. Archon's a... Archon's a beater. <coughs> hey, everybody. I'm going to take Archon. Archon just has too many cards that, that it works well with, and it's just so good. Okay. And then... And then there was not much. That's being stage. Ophiomancer. Do you guys say Ophiomancer or Ophiomancer? Do you guys do you guys put the emphasis on the Oaf or the Fio? Could just be Ophiomancer. I do like Teferi as well. And then we could be Esper and get this Rafine's Tower back. Hmm. Fascinating. I think Teferi is better than an Ophiomancer on the second pick. Yeah, we're just taking the Teferi. Besides, we don't have to be Archoning. Like, I don't want to take a, a second pick that locks in our first pick. I'd rather just take a second pick that's good. Because, you know, by the second pick, you should still be getting really good cards, right? It's two picks in. Oh, what up, Flash? The magics are calling. Frankie boy. The magics, the magics are calling. It's to the tune of Danny boy. Instead of pipes, magic is calling. What do we got here? Big Teferi and a mind twist. <laughs> This pack is really good. Wow. And a Fury even. It's definitely one of these three. God. Just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. I'm sorry, dude. This card wins so many games. Just the other draft. We won in our in game three, round three. Like, this was the card that won the game for us. We were going to flash it back with Teferi and kill our opponent. It just wins games. Ain't going to get me to pass it. That's for sure. <clears throat> I will take a Badlands. Badlands is good for reanimating. It's also good for fourth Irolingus. I like an Atali, though, too. <laughs> I got to take the Badlands. I can't let the greed get me that badly, right? Oh, Xander's Lounge is interesting. That's three of these four colors, which is nice. There's an Othari as well. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Xander's Lounge. I think we're just going to be four color non green again and hope like if that Rafine's tower comes back, I'll be like chef's kiss. Oh, gristle dad. Holy shit. I mean, there's also ley line binding and path, which are just very good removal spells. <sighs> but then there's this gristly bristle. I'm going to take the gristle brand. I, I think having gristle brand and archon puts us very, very firmly into a reanimate strategy. If we're able to find the pieces for it. Look at this long screwdriver I have. Look how big this thing is. I got this because I had my computer mounted and I had to find a way to get past it into the screws. We're taking Scrubland for sure, though. Having a white source <clears throat> when we have fourth year Lingus and Teferi. I think we're Grix. No, we're definitely Esper splashing red, right? That seems correct. So far, we only have one red card. Um... Valky is interesting. We could just cast Valky, right? For seven. I don't care about Inspiring Vantage or Odawara. Children's Edict is pretty good. Yeah, I think we're taking the Edict. I don't think there's enough combos with Valky. I think it's just like Bring to Light. Otherwise, we're just paying seven mana for him. I guess we'd be paying seven for Tybalt, not for Valky. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I want the Shattered Sanctum, but I think it's Baleful Mastery. I think we do want to have more removal than we've typically had, especially if this kills Planeswalkers as well. 
and it's instant speed. It exiles the creature. You can cast it for two. Baleful Master has a lot going for it, which is why it's like my it's my four drop of choice uh, when it comes to Planeswalker slash creature removal spell. It also costs one black, which is like much better than like a lot of the other ones. So this is looking pretty good. <clears throat> Very colorful, but pretty good. I mean, the cold from the from the screwdriver feels good. <clears throat> I've been actually walking on our treadmill more. I've been trying to walk like at least a mile a day, which is low. But like, I had back surgery like 15 years ago. And even now, like my back still sometimes acts up a little bit. So I'm trying to take it slower to kind of build up more core strength. But so... That's what I did before we, we went live here. Does Leyline come back? I want to do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eh, it would have to be like a last pick or a second to last pick. It would be close. <clears throat> Getting started is hard, hundred percent. Oh, good, green, 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 three green lands. Exactly what we don't want. That is unfortunate. However, seasoned hollow play does let us discard. So discarding one of these guys, it's a discard outlet. And it kind of feels better than like Una's Prowler here. So, sure. We'll take the discard outlet. Now all we need is animates. <sighs> Interesting. I think it's just Cathar Commando here. Astral Dragon's cute, but I think we have the two best reanimate cards so far. Ah! <laughs> Atali came back? <sighs> well... Maybe we're Mardu. Oh, Haunted Ridge? Wow. I could see us being Mardu and just not playing Teferi or splashing it off of something. That's insane. That feels pretty good, actually. I mean, now we have Scrubland, Badlands, Haunted, and Xander's Lounge, which is three on-color Mardu lands. Last pick, Temple Garden. Hmm, fascinating. Leyline did not... Come back. What do we got here? Dark Depths. We passed the uh, the thespian stage. Palantir is always good. Chandra is reasonable. I don't think we're first picking a bivouac. Mascaro is cool. I think Palantir is probably the strongest card in this pack. Savai Trium is, is all three, but I bet this comes back, and I bet this does not. Plus, we also have four lands already. I think I just want the, the Palantir here. Also, when we have like Archon, Atali, and Gristlebrand, it's very possible for our opponent to take like eight damage from a from a Palantir. <clears throat> so, yeah, if Savai Triumph comes back, like it's absolutely perfect for us. But I already think our land is pretty good. Our mana base is we have two of our three uh, dual lands, which is pretty sweet. Assuming that we're just Mardu here, but really we could easily play Teferi, I think. Oh, Marsh Flats. Also, Hull Breacher. Mm. Uh, no love for show and tell at all. No, I, I, I don't. I think it's kind of a trap. I don't think it's the best. Um, Marsh Flats is really good. Hull Breacher is kind of game breaking. Oh boy. <clears throat> I think I'm just taking Hullbreacher. I'm just greedying. I'm just greedily taking Hullbreacher here, I think, and we'll put Teferi back in. I, I think that's worth playing. If we get any non green dual land, it's very good. I bought a 181 for my cousin. He didn't know he had. I think after a good pressing, I can send a good. It's seven would be great. By he didn't know he had it, does that mean he, like, 
sold it to you for a steal or did you give him a reasonable rate because he's family? Godless Shrine. Animate Dead. Oh, yeah, we're definitely taking Animate Dead here. He got robbed. <laughs> Yeah, this pack's also stacked. Like, if we can get Gala Shrine, Skydiver, Stoneforge, Winds, Deep Cavern Bat, I'll take any of those on the wheel. What is it? What does it look like now? I assume by 1.5, I mean 1,500. Which, for an ungraded copy, is not terrible. Especially if you're going to have to do the work to get it graded, get it pressed. Um, Proving Ground is a forest, which is unfortunate. Creeping Tar Pit, Deserted Beach. Son of a beach. Beseech is interesting. I don't know if we have the mana base for it. I don't know what decks need the mana base for Beseech, but like being able to just go get a card like Hull Breacher, Teferi, Animate Dead, like whatever you want. It's pretty good. Could also be a Damnation deck. I actually kind of like Damnation here. I think we are more of a Damnation deck. I rarely play Damnation. <clears throat> oh, Him to Torok. I was going to take Water Grave, but I think Him to Torok is just way too strong, especially when we're base black. So, sure. Bray's Apprentice is interesting. Tenacious Underdog. I don't think we're Tribal Flamesing. Could just be Fiery Islet. I don't think we're casting that many red spells, though. Like, this is our only red spell, so I think we're actually almost really good based on what we have now. Again, like, with this configuration, I think we're more Esper, and we're just reanimating this and splashing for this. Well, that is a blue land, though, if that's the case. Rankle's a discard out. The only problem is, like, you have to wait till, like, you, you attack with Rankle, you deal the damage, you discard, and then they have a whole turn to, like, interact with your graveyard, which I don't love. I'm going to go with the land here. Oh, an Ulamog. Ledger Shredder's pretty good. It is a discard outlet. Thank you. Hey, Saru, thank you for the resub, buddy. Welcome back, my dude. Charter Course also... On, on discard outlet. I think we're, I think we should ledger shredder though. It also keeps us open for any, any future, um, fallen shinobis. Blood crypt, Spara's headquarters. Wish you were not a forest. Um, I think it's probably just blood crypt here. Oh, the Savai Triumph came back. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's good. I'm kind of hoping either Deserted Beach or Watery Grave also comes back. Uh, wow. Okay, Worm Coil. We could just cast a Worm Coil. The Raven Inspector's a guy. Hmm. Yeah, let's take Worm Coil. I don't think any of this anything in this pack is really exciting. We don't have a ton of fodder for dig through time oh god the shrine came back that's pretty good all right give me that watery grave and i will consider this pack a rate a roaring success This is all lands, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lands we can play. Eight playable lands. Seems good. Yeah, Beseech is fine. Most of our lands are black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of our lands produce black. That's Beseech territory. Field of the Dead? Okay. Maybe we Field of the Dead. We have a lot of unique lands here. Not oh, that's a late Rafelos. Sad. No watery grave, though. Unfortunate. 
or 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 deserted beach. Oh, a tundra though. Arid Mesa seems great here. Um, there's no power, right? I'm not overlooking anything. Yeah, Arid Mesa gets pretty much everything, right? It gets Xander's Lounge, Savai Triome. It can literally get every color we need. <clears throat> I don't think we're time spiraling here. Urza Saga gets nothing in our deck. Troll is good. If Troll or Tundra come back, I would even take a Gix. I think we're just taking Arab Mesa here. Oh, Mox Ruby. <laughs> Fantastic. You love to see it, especially when it's just passed to you. Not the best. I would have preferred any of the Esper Moxes, but I think that's still fine. I'll still take a Mox. <coughs> that helps us splash forth Eurlingus and Natali, sure. It also ramps us for both of those spells. Okie dokie. There's the Fallen Shinobi that we actually were hoping for due to Ledger Shredder. Also, Thoughtseize is phenomenal. Swords to Plowshare is also phenomenal. Two of the best one-mana interactive spells in the game. And Fallen Shinobi. I think we have to go Thoughtseize here. It just feels correct. <sighs> come on, Fallen Shinobi, come back. We also only have Animate Dead right now, but we also have Beseech, I guess, which kind of is an Animate Dead. <clears throat> Where are my Animates at? Uh, I don't think we need the removal as much. We have Baleful Mastery, Damnation, Teferi to Bounce. We have Shoulders Edict. Like, I think we're actually doing quite well on removal. I don't think it's actually Storm Carved Coast here. And the reason is that we have a lot of red lands already with very few red payoffs. I think it might just be Timeless Thank Dragon. You. Like this pack's not very impressive. Dennis, thank you for the resub, buddy. Really appreciate it. Life's been okay. Uh, you know, still looking for a job. If anybody knows of any leads, let me know. Yeah, I'll take Timeless Dragon. That seems fine. Oh, they're going to give me a Genesis Engine? Papa loves a Genesis Engine. It's also a discard outlet. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just not passing Genesis Engine. Sorry. It's just not in my nature. Uh, this pack's pretty rough. I think it's just Shield Breaker here. I don't think Savine's Reclamation does anything for us, really. Contagion seems real, just really weak. I think we're just taking the shield breaker. It's just artifact removal if we need it. We can just play it main deck too right now. So blessed. Oh, life death is actually perfect. That's good. Through the breach is good too though. Putting in an Archon, a Gristlebrand, and a Tali. Or even a Worm Coil. Oh man, this is actually a tough, this is actually pretty tough. What are our discard outlets currently? Ledger Shredder. I think Through the Breach might be better. Yeah, I want to take Through the Breach. Oh, an Emrakul? Well, I'm glad I took Through the Breach. Fatal Push is good but I'm not going to pass an Emrakul. I mean, this could be our 23 right now. I would like more blue lands. What is this? 23 plus 15. That's actually 38. So this is going to be our first pack. I'm crossing my fingers for that Tundra, but I don't think it's going to be there because the deserted beach wasn't there. 
So, but we do have an Arid Mesa, which does get a blue source, a white source, white source, white source. This is also 23. Timeless Dragon also plane cycles to get Savai Triome or... I mean, that would be a great reason for the Tundra. Because then we can just get a Tundra. Oh, um... Troll was one of the other cards that I wanted. And there's the Troll. Oh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> that gets... That gets everything. Wow. That's really good. Alright, now we need like one cut here. Cut Shield Breaker. Nothing exciting here. Snap is actually fine. This deck's kind of all over, but I think it's still fine. Troll just feels like fixing. <laughs> like, it gets all of our colors. Turn one mocks Troll... Uh, Triome is pretty good. So 23 and 17, about five more picks left. It's not bad. Emrakul, Archon, Gristlebrand, Atal. Oh, Fallen Shinobi came back. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one. Wow, that's great. Okay, so we need we need a cut now. Fire Covenant, that's a pretty easy pickup. That actually might be better than Damnation in our deck. Being able to only kill their guys for three mana at instant speed... Yeah, that seems better. We can probably cut Beseech. If Beseech got through the Breach, I'd be more on board with it, but... Hmm. Stomping ground, eh? Okay. Yeah, this is a fine 23, I think. We don't have many enablers for Fallen Shinobi, but... I don't care. That's a late Nissa. What am I, I mean, like, all the all the green cards are late, let's be honest. Oh, wow, that's a pretty, that's an insanely late Bone Shards. Good grief. Wow, that's shocking. That is a discard outlet. Unfortunately, we only have Animate Dead right now. He says right now as if there's more cards coming. <laughs> um, I could see cutting Timeless Dragon here. We already have Troll. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. <laughs> definitely, definitely heavy black. Everything else is basically a splash. Okay, so... everything yeah all right let's bring all of these in <clears throat> take out temple stomping field of the dead we get seven lands definitely don't need a red source we have one two three four five six seven eight red sources plenty white sources we have one two three four I could see six. Blue sources, we have less. One, two, three, four, five. And black sources, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can see going out of 10. This is six, six, 10. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three, four, five, six. 
two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that seems good. All right. Let's see what this deck can do. It's got a lot of cards I love, but we didn't we didn't flesh out a lot of the a lot of the archetypes here. We have one through the breach. To to be fair, in a, in the ideal through the breach deck, you're only getting through the breach and sneak attack. Those are your only two options for that for that type of ability. So we did get half of those, and we also have animate dead. So like, this like bodes well for our big creatures. We could also just cast them six seven. Yeah. So I don't know. I I could see actually cutting maybe like worm coil for timeless dragon. Just to have something cheaper, but like we have a ton of cheap stuff as well. So it's not like we don't have cheap stuff. We have like Thoughtseize on one, six two drops, four three drops. So. I'm, hy I'm hyping myself up because I think this deck looks fun. But I could also see us drawing things in very awkward configurations. I could also see our first round just never starting as well. All right, let's do it. Is this a hand? Ledger Shredder, discard. Yeah, this seems fine. We just need a white source. And we can just always pitch like our white cards to Ledger Shredder if we play a second spell. How easy is that gonna be? Great question. Blood Crypt. So this turn, if we play Blood Crypt on tap, we take two. If we play Fiery Islet to cast Ledger Shredder, we only take one. But then we still have to play this untapped at some point, or tapped. Oh, fascinating. Beautiful bird. It's just a beautiful bird. So if we play this untapped, and next turn we cast Palantir, we take three total. If we play this now, we take one, then we play this untapped for three, and then we take one more. So I think this is the play. Also Genesis Engine being able to like discard Gristlebrand while drawing us two cards deeper every turn is pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, they didn't, they didn't neutralize our shredder. Island, eh? Well, I think they're 100% making Palantir an elk. But we do get to either draw a card or deal them damage. Oh, interesting. Put you on top. Put you on top of that. I assume they will... Ne like, no one ever lets you... What? <laughs> no one ever lets you draw the first time. They did. I guess they let us draw one because they're going to elk it. That's my theory. They could also exchange control, which is totally fine. They lose their Oko. Four mana. Uh, is this pest infestation? Is it bring to light? This looks like a bring to light. Or a pest infestation. Those are my two theories. I think it's pest infestation. Oh, it's bring to light. Okay. For five. Their deck's looking sweet so far. Our deck seems sweet. 
but I've said that before, you know. Vindicate. Interesting. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Pitch the dad. Wow, they paid five mana to vindicate our Palantir. That's interesting. That does make me feel better about our situation considering they have three cards in hand. Just making that a guy, huh? Animate dead. Shouldred's Edict. Okay, well that's good. We can just make them sacrifice their, their thing. Yeah, so we can actually cycle this guy. Go grab Savai Triome for a white source. Uh, sack of Planeswalker. Each opponent, so I don't have to choose, man. And play Triome. And I think we just hold back here. Us dealing them two when we're at 15 versus them dealing us three just does not. We don't win that race. Oh, if it isn't the undreamt Tuna herself. Oh man, where's the where's the hull breacher? Those tunas ain't gonna dream themselves, you know. Is it a Minskin boo? Oh God, it's always a Minskin boo. <laughs> it's... Ugh. Actually, but if they sack something to draw to to do the draw cards, that's pretty good for us. I think I just want to pitch Hollow Blade here. I think we can cast Worm Coil. Actually, I think we should have played Seasoned and Hull Breacher next turn. I think that was the better. Yeah, because then we could have played two things and just killed Minsk and Boo. Um, definitely just blocking this guy and killing it, right? That seems really good. Come on, two mana spell. Through the breach. <laughs> and me with all my things in the graveyard. Yep. That is something. I almost want them to sacrifice this to draw the cards, you know? This one bird really ruins the worm coil. Man, that's so awkward. I mean, I definitely think we just play worm coil next turn. I mean, they have two cards. What are the odds of them drawing three off of this guy? It's It's got to be high, right? They could deal four to this. So if we, if we attack this, they can only put counters on this guy. However, we can then block, we can then through the breach a worm coil. Yeah, that's gotta be correct, right? Ugh. I, I really wanna just set them up. Oh, this is even better actually. Oh, because now we still get to do it, but we still get to, like, but now, like, it's not obvious. Oh, 
With three cards, I cannot imagine a scenario where they don't try to draw four here. I don't know, man. If I man, I've seen pretty. Odd. Yeah, maybe to you, but you're able. You got full info, you know. Blood tithe harvester. Sure, that guy doesn't do anything. <sighs> I mean, attacking us for four and dealing us four. Let's put it three, which is not not the best. Oh, are we gonna get to loot again? Oh wow. I kind of just want to Hullbreacher here now. Eh, it doesn't seem great, though. If we Hullbreacher here, then they can actually choose our Hullbreacher to target. Now they have one. They're just putting counters on this guy. Wow, that's the greed right there. Yeah, that seems good. Get two little gentlemen back. Oh yeah, that's a. You know, you know what, you know. What I always say. Ooh, that's a bingo. So if we just go everything at Minskin, but we just kill it, right? Now they get to draw nothing. Well, I think I'm feeling safe to play this guy. And now we can just pitch our island to draw two. That felt decent. Oh, okie dokie, what would we have drawn? Animate dead? Oh, that would have done it. <laughs> oh, that would have been... A bingo. Yeah, I don't think we're submitting any of these. Ember as Shieldbreaker, like, we didn't see a ton of artifacts. We saw Minsk and Boone and Oko, which are two of the absolute best Planeswalkers. <laughs> However, Snap does not bounce a Planeswalker. Fire Covenant does not hit a Planeswalker. We do have Bone Shards, Shoulders Edict, and Baleful uh, Mastery, so... Um... Yeah, I'll keep this. Air it into Xander's Lounge seems good. If we can get a two drop here, that would be great. Man, they got something to do. Oh, I like that. That's a turn to anything. Yeah, we have two great three drops here that we can play with this Mox Ruble. They have an Oko. Tireless Tracker, that's fine. You've played your land. Let's go get our blue mana. Beautiful. Oh, big Gris. All right, we'll play White Source, Ruby. <laughs> Fucking days in this deck. What is this? Come on, man. <sighs> Absolutely insane.
beautiful. I don't know. It feels kind of bad. Like, I would have been able to bounce their tracker, put them behind a whole turn, um, drawn a card. Like, now we just don't have much going on. I mean, if we can top deck, if we can go next turn Palantir into th through the breach, I'd be fine with that. You know? Okay, Haunted Ridge. Get busy ridging, I guess. Like, I'm just tempted to... Eh, no, we have enough. With Palantir on board, we should have enough gas to... They're at 16. The got got really made me laugh. Wow. I don't think I want either of these. I definitely don't care about Troll. I could see Baleful Master being fine killing the, the Tireless Tracker, so if you want to put that in the graveyard, then... It's not the card we want, right? So, yep, that's fine. Oh, a little, little kitty cat chariot. Yep. Through the breach one time. Because I think we're dead if we don't hit it. Bone shards. Um, That keeps us alive for sure. Cast with a discard. Kill the trackie. So now we have a good animate target and a good through the breach target. And we only take four on board, so we actually have two turns now. So that's good. I don't want either of these. <sighs> okay, fingers crossed. Okay, we hit planes and Genesis engine, so I think that's fine. Bone Shards is ready. <sighs> Man, never, never get the, never get the, the whole Breacher beats. Just one time I want to be able to deny my opponent some draws and make some treasures. Hopefully my less scathing YouTube comments have been better. <laughs> oh, man. I hope so, too. Okay, that's good. Well, that might kill us, right? No, I guess we go to one. Yeah, they're going to crew the chariot for sure and then just attack us for... Okay. One it is. Make a copy of the boo. They didn't? Okay. That's sad. <sighs> yep. That's the end. All right. That was rough. I feel like that opening hand was very good. I kind of want Damnation. <laughs> uh, I can take out Cathar Commando. Sure. We don't have a real uh, a deck that that gets punished too hard for a, a damnation. Okay, through the breach, but one land. 
If Through the Breaches animate, like, this would be a snap keep, but it's not, so it isn't. Well, that's interesting. We have three plays with this hand. Keep it, ship Hull Breacher, and then we actually have discard outlet for Gristlebrand. All right, they went to 6-2. So let's Thoughtseize. Oko, Necromancy, and Binding. Wow, those are all very good. Well, we're definitely hitting the Oko because that's the only card that is proactively doing something against us. I have to assume they're just getting like a trial or something here, right? Unless they drew like a Bird of Paradise for the turn one. That'd be wild. Okay. Um, yeah, let's play Hollow Blade here. Now they have Necromancy though, so like we can't actually discard Gristlebrand until we're ready. A land here into Palantir would be nice. Well, that is a land, I guess. <laughs> it does not let us play anything at this juncture. So we have a white, we have a black. This is a red and a blue, which is nice. We could also just get up Badlands to keep up Shouldered, but I think it's just Sanders Lounge here. I mean, we have shoulders either, because I don't care if they reanimate it. That's fine. Uh, actually, it might be Badlands so that we can end of turn shoulders edict. Also, if they necro if they necromancy this guy, then our Gristlebrand is much safer. It still makes me sad. <laughs> That's, uh, I do think it's Badlands here. And so that like that leaves us to play shoulders edict on their turn. And then we can Palantir on our own turn, so. <sighs> That's pretty good. Excel the top two cards until the next time we play those, sure. What do we get? Blood Tide and a Swamp. I mean, that's pretty good. Those are just two free cards. But that's a bad land. Okay. Yep. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. That's what we're doing, right? All right. <clears throat> Oh, a worm coil and a hull breacher, huh? Well, I don't care about the hull breacher. I'll put the worm coil on top because they're at 10, so we're probably just going to draw it. And if we don't, that's fine. And if we do, that's fine. Yep, cool. Yeah, the problem is that, like, giving us Wormcoil means they're probably never gonna 
they're they're always going to let us draw. Which I guess is not a problem, but it's weird because like relying on the damage that Palantir deals is pretty good. I definitely had opponents take like 14 damage off of Palantir. Which is pretty obscene, let's be honest. It is a 2023 Shrine of Burning Rage, yes. Now they're at nine. This is a three-turn clock with this Holland Blade. We know they have Leyline and Necromancy. They could get our Troll back, which is a thing. Also, if they put Warm Coal in the graveyard, getting that guy back would be problematic. Are they just getting Troll back? Oh, they're just Vindicating this again. That's fascinating. Come on, animate dead. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so irritated. <sighs> this is frustrating. That's so sad. What are they doing here? Oh, that's interesting. The problem is I can't discard anything here. And it doesn't it doesn't make him indestructible, but it's interesting they did it in block step because like that means we could have actually if we had the I guess they knew we didn't have it though. That's that's something, man. Yeah, I think we're just getting the land here, right? Because that actually lets us play Fallen Shinobi, or if we draw another land, we can get Worm Coil. And now through the breach is live for Gristlebrand. It deals them seven, and then we also get to... I guess they have Leyline. There's a lot of factors going on here. I'm going to assume they don't have planes, and they do have these two. And I think they're going to Necromancy here if they don't have anything else. Do they know they have this? Because they literally could have just played this guy and... Yeah, they're just getting Troll here? Interesting. The breach. A Tali. So not right now we have six, seven, five, six, seven, and eight mana creatures. I want to play this guy, and I bet they ley line at end of turn. That might be why they actually kept the the ley line mana up, so they don't lose to like through the breach. I mean it's a three turn clock. Like ley line's gone, necromancy's gone. Yeah, we know they have that guy. Yep, go to 12. One more land, we can play Worm Coil. Anime dead. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yep. I mean, animate dead to just get blood tie the harvester that does nothing because it can't even block this guy. <sighs> yep, that is unfortunate. Them having necromancy in hand, I mean, we couldn't let them keep Ogo, but like them having necromancy in hand kind of ruined the whole game. Why couldn't it be through the breach? All right, well, okay, now they're just going to daze us, I bet. No, they don't have a blue. Oh, I guess we still die because we can't block this guy. <laughs> so that doesn't even do anything. So yeah, that's the end. Maybe they'll forget. It's very possible. 
Ugh, they did not forget. Yep, great. Lost to my own troll. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> Couldn't have... Draw this one turn sooner. We get to discard Gristlebrand, kill our own troll, and then reanimate Gristlebrand. Like, whatever. That's super frustrating. Oh, well. <sighs> Magic is drawing cards in the wrong order constantly. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I think our deck is good. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, it's probably just Rona. Like, Rona actually... Yeah, let's take the Rona. That's kind of their whole plan, right? Yeah, I think we just get Savai Trium because it gives us a white, which is the only color we're missing. Creeping Tarpet and Mox come down, sure. I mean, we could also get like a Badlands or, or a Scrubland, I guess. Yeah, this is fine. I don't want to like open myself up to uh I think discard is more likely or less likely than removal here for an artifact, maybe. There's the island. So we know three of your five cards. Let's get some eye trial. That's a good dude. Genesis Engine. Genesis Engine, as they say. Oh, just attacking with that guy, huh? Um, I mean, this seems like a pretty easy... Oh, boy, that's interesting. That might change our plan. <laughs> so they have four mana. They got a Torsten, a Massacre Roll, and an Inferno Titan. If we play Hollow Blade, we just lose it. So there's no real benefit to playing a Hollow Blade here. <laughs> I think we're just playing Xander's Lounge and passing. And now we get to keep up Fire Covenant if it's relevant, and then we threw the Breach them next turn. That's pretty good. Chart a course. Okay. I imagine you're discarding Torsten Inferno or Torsten. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. I guess we get to block, though, right? That's pretty cool. Oh, they hit, like, nothing great, though. Damnation, Yawgmoth, Mystical. Three lands and an Orcish Bowmaster. That seems fine when we're going to Archon. Also, I'm pretty sure Fire Covenant getting rid of seven guys is... Eh, it's probably fine, right? I mean, the, the seven guys would deal with seven anyway, right? I guess we can get rid of five, and then we threw the breach the other two. That's probably better. Oh, it actually don't get any guys. <laughs> okay. Well, that's because it exiles. Magic is hard. Discarded a faithless looting. So we know you have Massacre, Inferno, Island, Swamp, Swamp, Bowmaster, and then one other card. That seems okay. 
You have no reanimation spells that we know of. I mean, I hate playing Archon when it doesn't actually kill anything. I almost kind of wait, want to wait until they play like Inferno Titan next turn. Fascinating. I guess we can still, yeah, we can still Genesis first. Especially because they have Bowmasters in hand. That's going to do it. <laughs> Okie dokie. Would you like to see my fat Emrakul? It's really cool. <sighs> Two games in a row, huh? We knew six of the seven cards. The seventh card was Days. Wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, we have seven lands. What is this you're doing in response? Faithless looting? Fable. So you've drawn Days and Fable. Okay, very good. Now I wish I didn't get discard Fire Covenant because that would have been great here. Fascinating. Well. We can still draw cards. Which is nice. I think we just keep two guys back, right? Like we have one, two, three, four. If they play Inferno Titan somehow, Massacre go kills the whole board. But then we get to keep the, uh, the Monarch. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, they discarded Island, Swamp, Bowmaster's gone. We know about these three. <laughs> all right, man, that was... I don't really love Attack All when we're at 12 and they have five power on board. Okay, well, they did not draw Inferno Titan. Like, they can play Massacre, Worm, Massacre Girl, but, like, that kills the whole board. Which lets us retain the monarchy. And then we get to Genesis Engine without penalty, really. won't accomplish anything but it sends a message it does it does send a message they could goblin shaman just to get a red here which looks like what they're doing oh fascinating I mean this feels like an easy block to not give them the monarchy so Oh, man. I think they're just going to cast Inferno Titan here. Interesting. So it's kind of the same. 
as we expected. Land. <laughs> it's a cruel joke of a land. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. That's unfortunate. Uh, so let's do this. Worm coil. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't hate a worm coil. I almost kind of want to Cathar Commando, though, and kill their Fable. Let's get rid of Troll here. Play the land here. Play Ledger. Play Cathar. Do this guy. Animate dead? Him to Torok. That's great. Okay. Um, well, we can just pitch Emrakul here. Because we're not going to cast Emrakul, right? So. Um, him, you. Atraxa and Corpse Dance. That's pretty good. So now we know they have Inferno Titan and maybe one other card. So we could have taken them off their red mana, but they're going to have to tap out to play Inferno Titan. It doesn't kill Ledger Shredder. And then we still get to play Archon next turn. So... Oh, you got Menace? Yeah, I guess we'll take four. <laughs> because I'm not going to double block here and lose a Ledger Shredder. So this has to just be Inferno Titan, right? Yeah, that seems fine. I don't know if they have that swamp. I have to assume they don't. Sure, I go to five. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, <laughs> one. That's got to be better, right? Oh, we get a Traxa. Interesting. Uh, yeah, pitch Godless Shrine, I guess. Oh, interesting. Is that the guy? Who's the guy? One, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> yeah, I guess tar pit and trigger is bad. Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, if we have lifelink creatures on board, then we're just fine. Like, if they attack with this guy and this guy, we take three from him, go to two... This guy's attacking, but then Atraxa blocks. So it's like... Atraxa also gives us a ton of cards. So I think we do that. And this lets us keep uh, Worm Coil Engine up as well. Sure. Drawing a card... That was an interesting choice. Okay, Baleful Mastery and Bone Shards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this will do, Pig. Baleful will be our instant. Um, Badlands can probably be our land, right? Okay. Creature will get... Oh, we can Fallen Shinobi. One, two, three, four... We didn't play a land this turn. That seems good. So we fall on Shinobi. We still have the mana for Baleful and Bone Shards. Did we play a land? I don't think so. No. All right. Yeah, we'll take Fallen Shinobi as our creature. Bone Shards and Baleful Mastery. All right, that's it. Done.
Oh, I unselected Baleful Mastery. Why? That's really that's really frustrating. There should be like two separate windows for that, man. Come on. Well, we know we're getting a top. And a blood crypt. Great. Well, uh, I guess we make a guy with Genesis engine and then we bone charge this idiot. Discard Ledger Shredder for this guy. Uh, make a guy, play can't play top we can play top i don't think i want to go to i think staying at four is probably the correct play here I wonder if they're forgetting about Genesis Engine or if they just have an answer for it. Oh, uh, let's get rid of Palantir, I think. Woo! <laughs> oh, man. That was something. Yeah, we were just going to double block here. We gain six, go to 11, we take three. Seems good. We also have these three guys in hand. Whew. All right. Well, that's a thing. Shield breaker any good? Not really. I almost don't mind snap when they have a bunch of guys they're reanimating. I think our deck's probably... I guess we can take Fire Covenant out and bring in Snap. That seems pretty good. <laughs> uh, fine. Writing was on the wall reference there. Uh, this seems actually pretty good. We can get a third land with this guy. We have Edict and Snap. If we hit through the Breach, we're in good shape. Good to know that both of both my first and second round... <laughs> first and second round opponents have had days. I think we actually um, cycle this guy to get a Xander's Lounge. That's pretty good. Maybe we just do this instead. Sacrifice is a non-token creature, right? Every fucking game, man. Oh, God. Yep, every game. You should just be, you should just, you should just expect it. Just expect that, like, the play that you want to resolve. Here we go, they're going to put a big creature. Then they're going to play a land. Then they're going to play Shallow Grave. They're going to hit us with a Traxa. It was an island. Boy, Days is the best bad card of all time. What a great way of putting it. Oh, there's the Xander's Lounge. Well, shoot. I think we still cycle this guy to get our fourth land. No? I wouldn't say we're winning, but I don't think we're losing either. You know? It's kind of a little column A, a little column B, you know? 
I wish I had a looter. Hmm. Well, that's pretty good. It's only it's non lands though, right? Yeah, non lands. Okay, that's fine. That's just fine. I am tempted to snap here, but you gotta you gotta ignore the temptation, you know. Okay, so now we have through the breach next turn. We know Days is gone. So... Call him a donkey. <laughs> No, you don't call him a donkey, though. You just say, like, wow, Sensei's Divining Top, what a donkey pick. Cityscape Leveler, what a donkey pick. And then he ended up with a, don a donkey deck. You know what I mean? Insult the opponent in chat. <laughs> yeah, tell him he's stupid. Justin, I got so tilted by that comment, man. Like, I got more tilted by that one comment than I think I've gotten by any comment in so long. I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Oh, interesting. I kind of like snapping this guy, you know? Let's snap him. What's he going to do? They're tapped out. Now they lose. Emrakul's going to wipe their whole board. I just had a kid and was so sleepy for my bad boy. Because <laughs> every other comment you've left since then has been like super cool and I really appreciate them and I read them all and I'm always like, yeah, that's a good dude. What happened to this guy? It was very Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde moment. But I, I, I forgive. I'm, I'm glad we've gotten to a, to a better place, you know? Is this, this is combat, right? When it deals combat damage? Sure. I don't know if it's like, well, this guy attacks. Oh, good. They're just dead. Rumors of their death have been completely accurate. Not exaggerated. Eh, we can wait to do that. I don't know for why, but... What are we getting here? Scrubland? Yeah, let's get a scrubbing bubbles. Whatever that means. Okay, well, your days is gone, and your days are numbered, so. This guy is a friend. Would you like to take a look at my Emrakul? It's right here. That, that was good. That's how, we, that's how we drew it up, you know? Yeah, touch my tentacles, bro. Give him a little tickle. Also, Justin, congrats on the new kid. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Katie has been reading tons and tons and tons of things about babies. So we're probably planning on something like that. You can't ask people to touch your tentacles live. No, no, I can because the new Twitch rolls, you know? It's artistic uh, innuendo. On the overnight ship right now since he wants food every hour for some reason. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'll be honest. The idea of kids... Not, not the, not like having kids, but the, like that, those first few years sounds so exhausting <laughs> and I'm like, so not looking forward to it. I'm very apprehensive about it. Just because I worry about physical death. I will play first. I will keep this hand. I completely understand. I bet you do, good sir. I bet you do. I 
I have never been so consecutively tired in my life. Not helping. Not helping. Oh, we'll give her. This? Oh, man. Our deck feels like it's well positioned against a deck with Giver of Runes. Yeah, I think, like, the two... Like, the two main factors are, like, having a partner and not, like, spreading yourself too thin in any way. Like, you know, physically, financially, like... Because you really don't want to compound all those stressors on top of one another. That feels really bad. Oh, no. Everybody's got Mox Rubies. My last opponent had a Mox Ruby. This one's got Mox Ruby. Yeah, they are just little bundles of love because they don't know any better, you know? They just don't know. It's the only thing they know. Did they... Oh, they hit an island? Okay. I think we're just blocking and pitching Archon here. That seems okay. They have Giver. Seems worse. No, I'm just going to take it. I don't want to pitch the Archon when we have Through the Breach in hand. If we end up getting, like, Mox. We have a Mox. Why can't we get our Mox? I don't know. What now? Baleful Mastery, eh? Okay. Well. Huh. Yeah, just leave them with the babysitter for the first couple of years. They don't need to know who their parents are. I'm assuming that we're going to draw a mox. That's my guess. Remember, if defending player has more cards than you do, exile the top card. I don't have more cards than you do. And if I Baleful Mastery something that you play, like then I definitely don't have more cards than you do. You're firebolting our face. Okay. All out. Interesting. I think we're just playing Cathar Commando here, right? I'll just take two. This guy has done nothing. Is this cast or play? Make cast a card. Okay, so you can't play lands off this guy. That seems good. I accept. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We're missing lands though. Very tempted to kill. Actually, maybe we just kill the staff. Mox. Bad lands. Good grief. Well, next turn we do have this guy. So, you know, that's a thing. Hmm. 
All right. I feel like if we can just survive this turn. So we can Baleful Mastery their Giver, or whatever they play this turn, and then they lose at least two guys. Carry Ziv. I'll give someone else protection. Okay, good. Don't waste our time. Alright, let's see what this does. One, two, three, four, five... Put a little Archie into play. That's pretty good, right? Okay, they discarded a Glory Bringer. You got First Strike? I don't think I want to... Uh, actually, that don't matter. Do it. We just pitch a card. He doesn't get removed from combat, so that's good. Well, two lands and a thought seize is pretty good when our opponent has very few cards in hand. But they are at two. Can I thought seize target myself so they take two? Because that would be kind of cool. I love five head Thoughtseize. Oh, well, I guess they can cast that for one. That would have been that would have been pretty good. I bet that would have won us the game. No, don't like that. They were so they were they tried to cast it immediately. Oh, they didn't cast it at all. Wow, this is a lot of cards. When I made you discard so many come on, really? This is what you're going to do. So they have no cards. So Thoughtseize does nothing. They have to block, which is good. What can we hit? Bone shards. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah, we have to attack here, so. They block, and we're definitely killing this this guy because we just don't want them to have access to the cards in the future. Okay, we'll pitch Thoughtseize. <laughs> uh, discard a card, kill this guy. Pitch Emrakul, because Thoughtseize is gone. I mean, we, we likely should have discarded Emrakul first. Because then we get a Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize doesn't shuffle in. Which is nice. So they don't have to, like, we're going to just draw Thoughtseize next turn and feel really sad. Baleful Mastery. Oh, another Through the Breach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Definitely bringing in Damnation here against them. Uh, feels like Fire Covenant and Damnation are probably going to be decent here. Uh, I could probably take out Cathar Commando. She protect, she attack. Most of all, she shuffle back. <laughs> oh, yes. The Ballad of Emrakul. Um, Snap's not terrible. Is it better than anything? 
we have here. I feel like their guys are so cheap that like snap isn't super valuable. Like I'm gonna bounce like a one or two drop and it just doesn't affect the tempo that much. I'd rather just kill them. I like our removal's good. Bone charge, edict, uh, Teferi bounces a guy, damnation, fire covenant, baleful mastery. Yeah, I feel like I, you'd have to be a real donkey to bring in Snap here, I think. <laughs> Good times. Uh. What's been the MVP this draft? It's like Archon of Cruelty, maybe? Atraxa? Animate Dead? Who knows? Probably Animate Dead, right? Shorkai did do some work, yeah. I mean, it just goes through so many cards and it makes 1-1s one and it's also an 8-8 if you happen to need that. This hand's not great, but I think it's got a lot of things going on. Turn one season hollow blade is not nothing to scoff at, you know. Uh, it's gonna go Ruby, probably just planes here. Yeah, Shurokai has been in my cube for like a year now and I haven't actually gotten to, I've drafted my cube like once since adding it and I did not get a chance to play it. <laughs> and so like, I guess I'm just really glad to see that it's uh, performing as well as it has been. Little sneeze coming on. Oh, I love a ledger shredder. <coughs> oh god, love it. Yeah, let's get in there. If I have to pitch a land, so be it. Look at me, I'm the aggressive deck. That card's good. I'm a big fan of this one as well. This card's earned my respect a lot. I mean, at worst, it's a 1-1 one, one flyer for three mana that draws that draws you a card. And at best, it just sits there and draws you more cards. So, you know. Not terrible. Oh, and also with Carrie Zev. Wow, that's a sick combo. Wow, that is impressive. We really need to draw non-land things here, I think. That's, that would be nice. That's a non-land thing. That is indeed a non-land thing. I think we're just getting scrub land here. Say whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage. So I can literally just attack with one here, which is great. And then we have a lot of blockers. <sighs> Not enough blockers, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We can actually kill Carry Zev if she if they attack with Carry Zev.
My dream is they forget this has trample and block it. <laughs> they did not. Well, we tried. They do have to attack with both Carry Zev and the Spirit Token to get the Monarchy, so. Not nothing. They could also just play their own fourth year Lingus here. Shanala, have a good night, buddy. Appreciate you, my dude. Okay, that guy's fine. Very big. This is hilarious because you have Forest Mountain Rafine's Tower for the other three land types. Oh, they just didn't attack. That's good. I do like that. Baleful Mastery on this Territorial Kavu seems good. I was like, or we can just draw an Emrakul. We did not do that. So, I think we're just holding back here. Like, I guess we just play Blood Crypt Tap and then don't do anything here. <laughs> I mean, I hopeful, hopefully we can just ride Bilf, uh, ride the Monarchy to victory here and just kind of rely on that. Emrakul? Hullbreacher. Shieldred's Edict. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I guess we're both drawing an extra card a turn. I assume they're looting. I should have done this first, but I may have also forgotten that the triggers again, like it's <laughs> there's so many cards that are like this triggers when it attacks. This triggers when it deals combat damage. If they bounce Rafine's tower, <laughs> lightning bolt on the shredder. Okay. That seems fine. Okay, so it does, it looks like they're playing like the aggro domain-ish deck. Interesting. Oh, an animate dead. Does that do anything? Not really. <laughs> oh, biscuits. Let's play another island, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. All this mana. I 
Yeah, we can make them sacrifice a token creature too, which is nice. We could animate. Like, I feel like our odds of drawing something big are better than our odds of like of Ledger Shredder getting the job done. I really wish <laughs> we had Hull Breacher. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> this is why we don't animate dead a, a Ledger Shredder. Sure, that's fine. I'll pay the extra one here. I do not feel like they have access to counter spells or anything, so. Tapping out for Minskin Boot. Hell Rider. Whoa. That's a daddy. Let's sack a token creature. <laughs> what? Okay, so. They're definitely attacking. I mean, we can just block. We can. There's. We have really good blocks here. I think. I think they're definitely going to get in. So maybe we just let them get in, and then with this trigger on the stack, we can. Like, let's see what they attack with first. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, we're definitely making them sacrifice a non-token creature, I guess. Like, if you make them sacrifice a token creature, they're sacrificing this. Then we have to block one, two for this, one for Ragavan. That's three, four, five, and we only have three. So we're going to get hit anyway. So we might as well make them sacrifice a higher quality creature. And yes, we'll pay one for it. They're probably going to sacrifice the Sentinel, I imagine. Oh, they sacrificed... I click the wrong one every fucking time on that card. It's very confusingly worded. I don't love it. Block here... Double block carry. We take three, four, five, go to nine. That seems fine. I'll probably just pitch. Uh, pitch. I'll just pitch planes. <laughs> I think through the breaching this guy is probably better. We deal what, six, seven, eight, 12 damage? And plus we have three creatures, so yeah, that's probably going to be lethal. That feels like the end. Yeah, you're tapped out. And I'm actually not going to pay because if they, by some miracle, have days, they don't have days. <laughs> you get nothing. Yeah, they sack their last two guys. This is a million damage. 2-1. Not terrible. It's pretty much the, the standard I expect. Thank you guys for watching preemptively. Uh, be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons. It's a great way to support the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Really appreciate it.